G'day, knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers here. I'm after a bottle of red that I got for my birthday just recently. And I know it's in here somewhere. Just where? Look here. Water? Seriously? God. Empty bottle. That's handy. Milo? Fair dinkum. The kids put stuff anywhere. So no wonder they can't find anything. Aha, uh -huh. down the back, as you'd expect. I think I need a better system for storing wine. And I don't want one of those conventional stack on top of one another type scenarios. I want something a little bit different. I think I'm going to have to make something. So what I've decided is to make the wine rack out of old pallets. Look at this stuff here. That'll come up beautiful. So what do you reckon? I think we should give it a crack. The pallet that I'm using for my wine rack is a hardwood pallet. And it's personal choice. And the reason is, is that when you clean these up and varnish them, the colours really pop out. Now I probably need to dismantle this pallet and just change a few things around and if you haven't done that before it can be a bit tricky because when you remove boards the boards tend to split so I did a video just recently and it was called how to build a raised garden bed in that I've done a tutorial on how to dismantle a pallet so I'll put a link to the video in the description box down below make sure you check it out and now for today's pallet tip. Moving a pallet, they're really heavy. and can be pretty awkward. So here's a great way to move a pallet without giving yourself a hernia. Especially if you're by yourself, is just to roll it. It's a piece of cake. So these are the timbers for the wine rack. Now, these three here are from the pallet that I dismantled. And these ones here are hardwood fence palings. Now these two are going to be the bottom of the wine rack and this one here hopefully will support the glasses. These two here are going to be the back of the wine rack and this is going to be the front of the wine rack. And these three here are the framework to hold all these together. Now I've cut a bit of an angle on it purely for looks. Now, these are about 280 millimetres high, or about 11 inches, which is about three quarters the height of a wine bottle. Now, these are a bit too rough to assemble currently, so with the aid of an electric planer and a sander, we'll give these a bit of a touch up, and then it's time to assemble. And remember, when using power tools, to wear at least goggles and earmuffs. When sanding fairly rough timber, it's a good idea to start off your first sand with an 80 grit sandpaper. Follow that with 120 grit sandpaper and finish with a 180. And that'll give you a nice smooth finish. The sanding's all done and it feels fantastic. All that's left is to glue and nail the rack together. Now I'm using a nail gun because I've got one. If you haven't got one, just use a hammer and nail or you can even screw it. Whichever way you choose, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, let's do this. So there it is, all nailed up and looking pretty snazzy. It's had its final sand and uh, you'll notice that I've added a block here, here and here. And the reason for that is that I'm attaching this wine glass holder, which I've made out of an old paling. I've cut the slots with a handsaw and then I've just gotten a chisel 
and a slight little tap and the block comes out. So that'll be attached to the bottom. And then finally, I'm just going to add a couple of coats of clear satin varnish to the whole job. And she'll be finished. Happy days. So there she is, all varnished up. And I must say, it's come up an absolute treat. Very happy. Now, just a couple of quick things. First of all, you'll notice that I've attached the glass rack to these three blocks, simply by just driving a couple of nails directly into them. Secondly, this is a fairly heavy unit, especially when these bottles are full of that beautiful red stuff. So the idea when hanging one of these is to locate at least two studs and screw directly into them. Now if you can't find a stud, don't panic. I did a video on stud detecting just recently using my homemade stud finder. Pretty tricky, guaranteed success. Now I'll leave a link to the video in the description box down below. So make sure you check that one out. And finally, just remember that when working with old pallet timbers or old fence palings, that you're not going to get a perfect fit or a perfect join. These things come split, twisted, warped, cracked, you name it, they've got it. So the best plan of attack is to work with the imperfections rather than try and hide them. Trust me, you'll sleep better at night. So there you have it. What a top project. Great tip, knackers. And as per usual, if you found this video useful, you can subscribe to my channel. The button's down there. Thumbs up, the button's down there as well. And you can also check me out on that Facebook thingy at DIY for Knuckleheads. Now, don't go to shit. There'll be a couple of photos going backwards and forwards of the finished product. Now, who's up for a beverage? I think there's some 89 Grange, vintage Grange here somewhere. No, that's not it. Aha! Got him. Bottoms up. Thank you.